Our kingdom is surrounded on all sides by our enemies and potential threats. Our alliances are secure, for the moment. But such things can change as quickly as the wind, and those who are unprepared will find themselves dead in the water. I must secure my realm's borders and make sure they all understand that we are not a people to be trifled with. Hello Wanderers, welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 roleplay series following House Trango. And as you will no doubt remember in our last episode, the realm of King Tancred the Eloquent passed to his son, King Tancred II, and Sardinia is now in the hands of a man who is focused on war as opposed to trade and coin. And that will play out over the course of King Tancred II's life, however long or short that may be. Now, uh, as you can tell, we are already in a war. And while we had originally returned to Sardinia to accept our coronation, we have once again rejoined the army. And now we are leading it in the war, the rebellion from the Navarrese against our Castilian allies. So we will be attending to this matter as quickly as possible, and hopefully it will be over with soon. We are also obligated to assist the rulers of Verona, which is another one of our allies that we have made by marrying off our children to various rulers. As you can see, our eldest daughter is the Queen of Galicia. Our son is married to the one of the House Hauteville members, and so on and so forth. My Marshal, Prince Gilbert, has been showing off a promising new recruit. Let us take a look at this man. He is ambitious, he is brave, he is patient, good set of traits, skill tactician, he's club-footed. But uh, he looks like he'll probably make a good knight. And we're always looking for good knights here in the Kingdom of Sardinia. So uh, we are just going to let our troops uh, attach to the army here. I don't really want to micromanage this. It's just kind of a minor war. It should be no problem at all. As you can see, we're obviously losing money quite quickly. And that is no doubt due to the fact that we have a rather large force raised here, but also in part due to the fact that King Tancred the Eloquent was a man who had significant resources to call upon in terms of currency and trade and coin. But King Tancred II does not have those same connections, so... Even without our armies raised, we will no doubt be not pulling in as much money as when we were playing as his father. As you can see there, we won the war. And we are going to return our armies over here to Italy. And attempt to finish off that war as well. It doesn't look like it's going to be that much trouble. We can hire a... Uh, somebody's inspiration they want to weave something glorious to me 50 coins i think we could probably afford that although we are a character who cares mostly about war that's not to say that we are not interested in the glory of our own house so we won't be avoiding spending money when we have enough to make do, but we will prioritize the army, of course. Uh, Benedicta is thankful for us putting our trust in her, and uh, I think we should have another tapestry demonstrating life in Sardinia. We already have one, but it can't hurt to have two. You never have too many tapestries. That's something I was always taught. We can do some ransoms, so let us ransom these noble prisoners. We can easily make up the money 
that we did there earlier. We can also change our brother's contracts. And I do want to potentially turn him into a march. And then we will simply increase his feudal taxes and use his hook there. We're making him a march because of the position of the Byzantine Emperor, Empire here on our borders. Now, obviously, they are a large threat. I think that we could probably take them on. They have a lot of troops, but consider that they'd have to gather up all those troops, bring them over here to Italy where we have the advantage. We have allies in Verona, and uh, I believe we also allied with Burgundy as well or we will be in the near future. So, okay, what is this? Why is there noise coming from inside Abdallah's chest? I look around the room, there's no one here. It's empty and dark. Greek. Could it be a spirit, some sort of malicious sprite? Suddenly it bursts open, revealing my jester can lock and jumping and flailing his arms. Beware the Abdallah's chest ghost. I've come to make you laugh, he screams gleefully. My poor heart, 3% chance that we die. Wouldn't that be hilarious? I don't think it's going to happen, but it, it is a 3% chance. Well, we didn't die, but we were overwhelmed by stress. We're going to imprison Ken Lachen. We're under arrest, Ken Lachen, for crimes against humor. There we go. You can stay in dungeon for all I care. You don't scare the king. My god, what did he think was gonna happen? Okay, our forces are over here in Italy. Looks like they're, they've pretty much got this handled, but we're obviously going to assist as much as we can. My lord, look at the thread. I've never seen such fine quality before. Benedictus wants us to purchase some. Whoa, that's pretty. Huh. Uh, that's pretty pricey. Uh, I don't think we're made of money, and we're also not going to steal this from our own subjects. But we will ask our head of faith for some gold. The Pope already betrayed our family not too long ago, so we will get as much out of him as we can. Obviously, the Pope is somebody we would like to deal with as well, but that could be a little bit more difficult. As he does have a lot of troops and a lot of money to spend on mercenaries, so things could be rather difficult if we do attempt to act against the Pope. I'd honestly probably like our chances against the the Byzantines better than against the Pope. Is there anyone special to us? Yeah, let's uh, dedicate this to our wife, Emma, uh, Emma Someone we do care for, although we're in some ways, love is something that comes difficultly uh, to King Tancred, but he does care for his wife. I do have a martial perk. Let's get, uh, go down the strategist route for now. We are sieging down some of this territory. Let's go and attack this army here. Should be able to catch them there, and I don't think that we'll have any trouble defeating the armies of our enemies here. And as you can see, we are crushing them quite easily. Our allies getting there just at the end of the battle as they naturally do. Just in time to see our glorious victory. We'll march over here into Friuli and then deal, deal with the rest of that. Nothing really to see here in the battle reports. There's no major injuries or wounds to be looking at. My vassal, Mayor Luigi, it costs me well-met liege. I've heard tell of your patronage of Benedicta the Weaver. They say she is weaving historical record 
worthy of a king. Please take this and give this to her. I wouldn't want to miss uh, out on the chance to aid in the creation of a masterpiece. Ah, good. Let us increase the quality. We are not uh, the type of person who would pocket that coin for ourselves, I don't think. It doesn't really seem to fit the character of King Tancred II. Ooh, who is this? Duke Armando has been... Oh wow, murderer and a kinslayer and excommunicated. Suddenly our ally is looking more like a potential vulnerability. But man, they've got a powerful marriage alliance here. The Duchess of Bavaria and the Duke of Verona. Then again, we are not friends with the Pope at the moment. So the fact that... We are going against the grain by allying with somebody who is excommunicated. Doesn't strike me as something that is too far out of the realm of possibility. In here, my lord, my beneficiary Benedicta, gestures to the door of her weavery where she has been toiling for months on my commission. So let's see what we got here. Benedicta's wall tapestry dynasty opinion plus three court care and dear bonus plus two not a particularly good uh, trait but oh wow our wife is pregnant at age 43 impressive well I guess we'll have one more child let's see if it's a son or a daughter So the sieges wind down. Ken Lachen has died in the dungeons. Well, you shouldn't have jumped out of that chest and tried to scare me, uh, Ken Lachen. That was a bad idea. There we go. Siege is done. And the rebellion against Verona is finished. So we can disband our armies. There we go. So as you can see, we do make a little bit of money, but it's not the massive amount we were making when we were playing as the good Tancred the first. Uh, we do have the other tapestry, but we're not going to switch it out for this one here. Uh, nor are we going to switch it out for either of these banners. So we may give the tapestry out as a gift. Or something along those lines, but for now it is not going to be something that we will be dealing with. What we will be dealing with is potentially, finally, acting against the Iberian lords here. We do want to capture this coast. That has been something that Tancred II has been trying to do since he was quite a bit younger. As you'll remember, we did have one failed war here that took place just before the Crusade where our attention was diverted from the plan. So I think that we will be doing this. And I'm pretty sure that we should have a pretty decent chance considering that we'll have access to at least one of the Holy Orders. Probably the Knights Templar we could raise up here and... I don't think we'll have too much trouble if we do. The village market is always bustling with activity. While I wait to meet something, I oddly watch people as they go to and fro. From earnest farmers selling and buying produce to crafty merchants from exotic lands, many have gathered here to do business. I notice a little, a little girl working at the stall nearby, so I strike up a conversation with her. I sell fruits and vegetables with my mother. It's fun most days, but hard work. Better get used to life of hard work. Work is pointless without devotion for God. Uh, I think we would probably have somewhat rough words for the kid. Obviously, Tancred II is not exactly somebody who probably does well 
with kids. Ah, another son. All right, well, looks like our realm is going to get a little bit of a split in the future. We will choose a name for him, such as... Hmm. Let's uh, name him after one of our grandparents here. So we've got, you know, King Gilbert. How about Jordan? You know what? We haven't had a Jordan in a while. There we go. So our third son shall be Prince Jordan. And let us hope he grows to be a strong and wise young man. We shall see. Inspired person. She wants to make a cabinet. Very well. We do have the money once again. All right. It's time to go to war. Holy War for the Duchy of Valencia. So we're going to pause it there. Going to raise all of our men. Oh, actually just all of our troops, I mean. Raise the local. Wait. I raise everybody. There we go. Finally, it took me three tries to press the right button there. We will probably split our troops up and then let them fill up on supplies before we go into the enemy territory. And we're also going to hire the Holy Order. Unfortunately, we cannot. We would be able to hire these guys, but they are currently hired. All right, well, that still doesn't worry me too much. We can call our allies to war, so we are going to call in the Galicians, because they're nearby, the West Franconians, and honestly, we might as well call in the Veronese, just to ensure that we find success here in this war. So, that should be that. Yeah, the enemies are joining the war, but we will significantly outnumber them here with our allies. Like I said, we're going to split our troops up here just to get enough supplies here. So... Uh, let's dedicate this cabinet to the Lord. Okay, so our armies are getting supplies. They'll gather up there. Gives us time for our allies to reach us as well. So. Strategical impasse. I am sitting around the map table with Duke Folk and Mayor Tariq discussing our strategy for the ongoing war. Folk bangs his fist on the table and loudly proclaims we should charge the enemy directly and crush them with sheer might while Tariq nervously mutters of how we should avoid unnecessary engagements and fight a war of attrition. It is my right to decide our ultimate course of action. You know what? We are a something of a tactical genius, so I think we could probably employ something of a combination, charging in and then luring them out into spreading their supplies too thin and easily conquering them that way so they've got quite a few troops gathering up here I do have my forces nearby enough that I'm not too worried we'll let the Veronese join us and then we should be ready to go my mother has many things to say about the knights of my realm commenting on everything from how they train to what they should be preparing for in the field even the knights admit that what she says makes sense. Ah, yes, our mother, she is a... Something of a fierce woman. Well, fierce, uh, fierce drinker as well. Uh, how should the knights be <laughs> organized? Uh, hmm. I think that we should probably... No, we alone decide how our army shall fight. Our mother is not meant to deal with that and our eldest son has come of age he is a charismatic negotiator 
Uh, you don't really need that helmet, so let's uh, take care of that. There we go. So our son is uh, one of our knights, and no doubt he will prove himself. Oh, and our brother has created a cadet branch. The house of Drango Napoli. That is, uh, that's all right name. But if you guys have any better names for the Gilbert cadet branch in the chat, let me know. And in between the next episode, we could probably change that if we come up with a somewhat better name. All right, let us gather up our troops here and let's attempt to win this engagement there we go our allied forces coming all in looks like we should have this one pretty easily i think obviously tankred is leading the battle himself and this should be something of a pretty big battle I'm not too concerned about the artifact that you're building right now. So just make do with what you have. So there we go. The battle is engaged and our forces rushing down the field. The heavy Seculo Norman Knights charging across in between the peaks and valleys here in the barony of Leda. So we won that battle. Now it's time to get some sieges going because that's the only way we're going to win this war is if we can win the sieges. Uh, we'll probably split our troops in half, I imagine. And try to maybe go here into Castellon as well. And our allies should provide us with the backup that we need. Uh, wanton desires, uh, because of the stress. I don't think that Tancred is the type of person who would go to a brothel. Uh, nor do I think he's the type who would become reclusive. So I think we're just going to tank that stress and kind of try to just press on. That seems like the most tankard the second way of dealing with his problems. Uh, when you're feeling stressed, just ignore it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the right men at arms to deal with these sieges. I was hoping maybe our allies would come in, but we will come back as soon as we have the sieges in a proper spot and or if anything interesting happens in the meantime ah well first we're going to take a look at our brand new sturdy cabinet very good job arda finished it while she was pregnant as well with some unknown person's uh child i suppose so that is a very nice cabinet uh, let's put it up in our uh, court. Oh, I guess it can't go here. Maybe it's one of these side ones. Hmm. Well, it's definitely not better than Abdallah's chest. Book, book. Yeah, another thing that we don't really have room for. Oh, well. And like I said, we'll be back as soon as anything interesting comes about. Uh, apparently the Duchess here is demanding <laughs> the Scepter of Jaira here. Um, mm -hmm. Do we give it to her? Is this thing even good? Are we even really using it? That's a question. Because I'm not opposed to giving it to her if it is something... It's just plus one learning. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, I'm not opposed to giving... If we can give this over 
and gain a big opinion of one of our most influential vassals, I think that's actually a pretty good idea. And as you can see here, we are just about to finish the siege in Castellon. Our brother is good at finding recruits. Here we have a patient, just man, S pretty skilled fighter. He's Herculean. All right, well, Corrado shall serve us well. And if any of these knights make a name for themselves, like we did have this battle here. This guy was killed by Rodrigo de la Vega. Uh, let's see, is that one of our knights? No, that wasn't one of ours. This one was killed by Podesto Vittorio of Trent. No, but if any of our knights do make a name for themselves, then we will do our best to try to give them some uh, reward for that, potentially with land here. Uh-oh. All right, looks like we are engaged in a battle. We weren't really quite expecting it, but our allies should get here, and it looks like it'll actually turn out significantly in our favor. And then we can move right in and attack the secondary enemy army here. And basically we've split them in half. So obviously King Tancred's tactics are winning out here. And we are quickly making do with this war. Let's see if there's anything in this one as well. Some enemies wounded. We did lose one of our own guys. Well, he was... He died from complications of flagellation. As you can see, significantly outnumber them in terms of knights, and that's probably going to be one of the major causes of our victories here in the battles. Obviously, Seculo Norman knights are among the best in the world. Oh, and we've discovered divine rights. That is pretty good. That means we can continue on with our cultural fascination of knighthood, which we've still got a few years before we get that one, but once we do, it should be good. What did we get for divine rights? Uh, compress several claims in a single war. Oh, that's good. Unlock the Palatinate feudal contract. Title creation crosses le uh, lessened. Eh, yeah, altogether not too bad. Oh, unfortunately, while I was not paying attention, we did get caught without our allies to back us up here in Valencia, which is unfortunate, but at least we were not captured in the battle. Yeah, that could have gone pretty badly for us. Let's gather up with the rest of our army here. Was a little distracted, but such things do happen. Let us ask the Pope for more gold. What is this? The Cursed Occitan Mace. <laughs> a cursed mace, eh? Well, I don't know if we'll use it, but... We will certainly hold on to it for now. Gather up our armies once more. And I think we should be pretty close to finishing this war with maybe one or two more sieges. I don't think it's going to take too much more than that to finish the enemies off. Looks like we have an event here. Two palfreys. Duke Ormondo of Verona has bestowed upon me a most gracious gift. A couple of well-bred palfreys. One mare and one stallion. My lord, my spy master, Grand Mayor Ferrant, beckons me over to the mayor. Look at these muscles and those hindquarters. This one would serve well in war. They will serve the ladies and lords of the court. We could sell them or we could train them. Well, we're definitely going to 
train ourselves with a brand new war horse. That's pretty awesome. That brings us to 40 prowess. Man, I don't think there would be anybody who could take uh, take down Tancred in battle. Uh, we will use a historical name for the horse. And I think that uh, we will go with the name of our ancestor, King Charlemagne's horse, Tinsinder. As you will recall, we are indeed descended from Charlemagne himself. All right, this time we're going to go into the battle, and even though we don't have our allies... Oh, I thought we might have a little bit better of an advantage here. All right, let us, let us retreat. So it looks like, uh, despite Tancred's skills, we are not infallible when it comes to matters of war. That is for sure. I wonder if we can bring in our allies and get them to join in a secondary fight this time. I think this time we'll have it. Tancred maybe got a little bit overconfident there, but this time with our allies to back us up, it will be a much different story. All right, last thing we need to do, it appears, is to capture Valencia itself. So we're going to send our armies there. And once we have captured it, we will return and see the aftermath of this war. Unless anything interesting happens in the meantime. We do have a new perk to unlock. So I think we're going to go with... Potentially the uh, Parthian tactics to support our knights. And that should probably give us some decent advantages in battle as well. Minty breath. There are those who, after eating, prefer to consume a bit of mint leaves before they clean their teeth in the evening. I've just finished some dinner and preparing for bed, but I still have some time to take a bit of mint. Well, I mean, I do enjoy mint. Teeth cleaning is enough, but yeah, I think uh, I don't think we're too concerned about things like chewing on mint before bed here. Oh man, Gilbert's just finding all sorts of commanders. Arrogant, chaste. This guy's pretty good too, though. We're just going to bring in essentially as many knights as we can as many of them will die in our wars and we could certainly use as many as possible. As you can see, most of our allies have head off here. Uh, looks like some of our forces got raised there. I definitely made a few mistakes when I was raising these uh, troops here. Oh, our mother Sybil has died. That is sad news, obviously, for King Tancred. But this war rages on and we cannot take the time to mourn our dear mother. We must win this battle and this war. Our allies are sieging down. We'll try to take back Alcanis. And I think that'll give us the advantage there. There we go, and we just got the war score we needed there to enforce our demands upon the foul Emir Ismail Ibn Ahmad. And thus we shall let's enforce our demands. And there we go, although it was a little bit of a chaotic war. I, some, I thought I raised all my armies. I know I 
clicked a lot of buttons there and it didn't always uh, end up working out like I expected, but uh, eventually we got our men at arms raised and finished off that war. It just was a little bit harder than maybe it should have been. Let's accept some ransoms and we can take a look at Sardinia as it stands now with Valencia as one of our properties. So, as you can see, we have certainly begun to kind of expand around this part of the Mediterranean. And I think that's the goal. I think we're going to try to perhaps take little bits of North Africa at some point as well. I'm not opposed to doing a little bit more of Iberia here, but I think capturing Valencia was a big part. Essentially, we are kind of securing the uh, this part of the Mediterranean here for our ships and really just solidifying our position as the main maritime power in the Mediterranean. And we're off to a pretty good start of that. We've got lots of money. We have lots of troops. We've got lots of land. And things are so far going exactly according to plan for King Tancred. How this plan will unfold? Well, we'll have to see that in the next episode. As always, I would like to thank everyone who is supporting the channel on Patreon. It is obviously greatly appreciated. If you would like to support the channel through Patreon, there will be a link in the description. There's some pretty good uh, perks that you can get with that as well. So be sure to take a look. We also have a Discord. Links are also in the description for that. Until the next time, I have been Stray. You have all been absolutely wonderful. And I will see you in the next episode.